see you guys online today and I'm so happy that you get to join us. I'm Teacher Shay and I love to draw and make art for fun and of course, I love to share it with kids just like you. <laughs> but I really miss getting creative with a big bunch of my friends and I'm sure you do too. So, today I am inviting everybody to join me in some digital painting. We are going to use lots of colors and use our imagination, but none of this would be possible without SM Supermodels. So if you want to post any pictures of your artwork today or pictures and videos of you doing our online class as we go, please make sure to tag SM Supermodels and don't forget to use the hashtag, hashtag awesome learning and hashtag SM Kids Month 2020. All right, now that we have that all set, it's time for us to make sure that we have everything we need for our class today. Of course, we will need a device, so you can use your phone or you can use a tablet like this one. And if you have a stylus like mine, that is nice and handy, but if you don't, that's okay because your finger works just as well. And we will be using a free drawing app. We will flash the name of the app on our screen here. And so, go download that app right now. It is free on iOS and Android. And I will wait here as you go download that app. So pause this video and go download. I'll see you in one second. All right, you have it? <laughs> Beautiful. That's it, I think we're all set. Are you guys ready? Give me a big thumbs up if you're ready. Yes? All right, let's go. All right, so because we haven't spent as much time outside as we usually would, I thought it might be really nice for all of us to draw something that we can find out in nature. So we are going to be drawing three things today, but before we do all of that, let us look at our app and see all of these new tools that we have. So on our left side of the screen, we have all of these tools to experiment with. And on the right side of the screen, you might see this little toggle button, do you see that? And it appears with some bars. So the top bar is to control the opacity of the stroke of whatever pen you end up using. And the opacity just means how dark that stroke ends up being. So if you put it on the highest opacity at 100, it'll be dark. And if you put it a little bit lower, it'll be a little bit lighter. All right. Of course, we have an undo button on the top left of the screen. So if you guys make any mistakes, don't even worry. You could just click that and that's going to be like our eraser. Anyway, the bottom little toggle bar thing is the size of your pen. So there we go. You can make it big or you can make it teeny tiny small. All right. So for this little experiment that we are going to do, let us put our opacity to the highest and our size to the highest so we can see all of our tools. So our first one is a pencil. There you go. It looks just like a pencil. And our next one is a fine tip pen. And up next, we have a felt tip marker. And that looks just like a felt tip marker. And this one is really cool. This one's a brush pen. So you can change the size of the line depending on how you use it. And the next one, we have our oil pastel crayon. There we go. And of course, we have the acrylic brush. Look, really cool strokes if you do it like that. You can play around with that. And this one is one of my favorites. It's the watercolor brush, and it looks just like watercolor. There we go, you see, and we can blend, so just play around. And this one is the air spray brush. And of course, we also have an ink pen. All right, and then this one is super, super cool because we can add shapes if we want. There we go, to our, to our drawings, and we can change the shape size and other things like that. And that tool does other cool things too. But we will get to that in a little bit. First things first, let us start with our first drawing. Are you guys ready? I think you might be. All right, so let's start with a fresh page. So you can just click undo until you get a fresh page or you can just click the top four squares and that gives you a new piece of paper. So for our first drawing, we are going to be drawing a rainbow. And not just any rainbow, we are going to be drawing a watercolor rainbow, as well as with some clouds. So that tool that I showed you about, this one, 
with the dots. We can actually click this bit and hmm, we can change the color of the background. So click the color of the background that you want it to be. I just picked something off white. And then you can just click the screen and the whole thing transforms. I think I might pick a different color. And the fun part is you can pick any color you want on this left side of, on the right side of the screen, if you can see. So I might pick this one. I think this one's really good to be a background for our rainbow. Super cool. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to be using the watercolor brush. So I'm going to make the size a little bit smaller, the opacity to the highest. And I'm going to click red first. Or, so let's begin with our red arch on our rainbow. There you go, and it looks just like a watercolor brush stroke. And then I'm going to go in with orange. Yay! And my favorite thing about watercolor is that you can let all of the colors kind of bleed into each other and it still looks really cool if you see all of the lines that are blurry. I think that looks really pretty. And so we have red, orange, and yellow. There we go, and you can draw as fast or as slow as you want. And remember, with all of the technical stuff I said with this app, you can always just pause this video and go back if you want to listen to something another time. Um, just take it at your own speed. Okay, after yellow, I'm going to add some green. Also, this doesn't have to be rainbow colors. You can make your rainbow whatever color you want. We all want to get really creative here. So whatever you feel like making it, go right ahead. I'm going to do a green. Oop. And my hand kind of slipped there, but that's okay. That's so cute. And the trick to watercolor is to not let it look too perfect. Because watercolor is one of those rustic <laughs> kind of paints. And now we have indigo. We're almost at the last color. So we have indigo. And of course, the last one, violet. Yay! We have all the colors of the rainbow. We have red, orange, yellow, and green, blue, and indigo, that's and violet. Love it! Good job, everyone. Can I see yours? Can you show me all of your rainbows so far? Hold them up. <laughs> Good job, everyone! All right, now for our clouds. Mm, we have a bunch of options for the clouds, but I think because we've used watercolor for our actual rainbow arches, maybe we can use the acrylic brush. And we're gonna click this white color like a cloud, and we're just gonna make some messy strokes like that. Woo, how cool! How did I do that? Oh my goodness. There we go, did you see that? It blended into pink. Oh, I'm not even sure how I did that. See guys, you learn something new all the time. I think it was this. Is it this? No. Wow! Alright, and now there's this other tool that we didn't get to cover. And it is the blender tool. And it can help us blend all of these edges. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so it helps us blend this cloud out to make it look nice and fluffy. There we go. And just keep blending. The more you blend, the more realistic it looks like a cloud. Oh my gosh, this is so much fun! And you can also change the opacity even of this. So if you want to add more, if you want to make your blending a little bit darker. All right, now on to the next cloud. I love drawing and making art because we can just relax and take our time. There we go. So remember with this tool, it's nice to just keep blending. And if you feel like your watercolor um, arches are bleeding into the cloud, try to stroke up like that. There you go. To bring the white to those colors. Just keep blending. Beautiful. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. All right. I think mine is just about done. Do you see all the fluffy clouds? I hope yours is just as fluffy. But of course, it doesn't need to be like this. If you guys want to use the marker tool, that's fine. Use whatever tool you want. But this is just an idea. 
And there we go, that is my watercolor rainbow with some fluffy clouds. Yay, can I see yours? Three, two, one, hold them up. Good job, wow! All right, so now that we've gotten our practice drawing nice and done, let us move on to our next one. Okay, now I'm going to flip those four squares again so we can get a new sheet of paper. And for this one, I think we might be drawing a few flowers because we have so many options when it comes to flowers, right? Okay, I think for this background, I'm going to use the watercolor brush and I'm going to pick a light kind of color because we are going to get very colorful with our flowers. I'm going to make the opacity very high, the brush size very high because I just want to color in like that with the watercolor and make it look kind of just like it's not white. <laughs> um, just to add a little bit more depth. There we go. I added another color. Oop, there we go. And then I'm going to go back in with that first color. So it's just like art in real life and we can blend all the things we want and experiment with colors and you can just get as creative as you want. So there we go. Now my background doesn't look as plain as just a plain white background. It looks like it's been dipped in watercolor. So now that this is how it looks, remember you can zoom in and out. So you can use your fingers to zoom in like this or to zoom out like that. All right, so I'm gonna zoom into this part because we're gonna start with our first flower. And we're gonna make a really basic flower. We are going to make a daisy. So I am going to click the white color. There we go. And I'm gonna pick the felt pen. I'm gonna make it a little bit, hmm, I think it's our paper, there we go. I'm gonna make it, I think, hold on, let's zoom in, there we go. All right, I'm gonna make mine a little bit thinner. We're gonna start with the petals first. So let's get in there with the petals. And remember, if you're using your fingers, that's okay too. And this doesn't have to be perfect. They're all just kind of doodling. There we go. So we're going to make long oblongs like that. Long oblongs. And it might look a little crazy now. But it'll make a little more sense as we keep doing it. There we go. Do you guys see the flower? There we go. It looks a little crazy still. So I'm just going to keep adding petals until I'm happy with the amount of petals. And the best part about this is you can go back in and if you want to straighten any lines, you can just go over them and straighten them out like that. But you also don't have to because even the imperfect lines are cute. And that's very trendy right now. <laughs> All right. So I'll give you guys a few more moments to do that. And then we're going to go in with a yellow. I'm going to make the size a little bit bigger and I'm going to go in with the center of our flower. So we can draw it in or we can also, so I'm just going to undo that, we can also use this tool, remember this one, this one with all the little dots, and take a circle and make it small and add it to the center of our flower. But that's up to you. I think the not perfect circle is really cute too. All right, and now I'm going to go in and get the color green. I think we might go with this green. Oh no, oh my goodness, no, it turned the circle green. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, my bad, if that's because I didn't press this. I didn't press the check mark. So make sure to press the check mark, and then we are going in with our, hmm, let's go in with the oil pastel. And then we are going to click the green color and I'm gonna make this very small because I'm going to draw in the stem. And it's okay if you overlap one of the um, petals because we can always go in and take that back. I'm just going to color this in and I really like the oil pastel. It looks a little bit cute. There we go. And I think that's it. So that is my first flower. We have a daisy. Can I see all of yours? Can you hold them up 
in three, two, one. Yay, good job everyone. Give yourselves a big pat on the back. All right, for our next flower, we're gonna start with the stem. So we're gonna click that pencil again. There we go, the pencil tool, hold on. We're gonna click the pencil tool and then we're gonna go to the same green as a while ago. I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna draw one long stem like that and I'm gonna give it a bit of a curve. Ooh, I don't like that one. Good thing we have an undo button. <laughs> so I'm gonna do one long stem like that and we're gonna do a bit of a curve. And then I am going to take the oil pastel uh, tool and I'm gonna click a lavender color because we are actually going to draw a little sprig of lavender. So we're gonna start at the top and just make any kind of shape that we want. If you've seen lavender before, and this is like the daisy, we're just gonna make oblong shapes like that. There we go. There, so that's the top of it. And as we go to the bottom, I'm gonna leave a bit of space and then draw more. And I'm just gonna keep going. So we're gonna leave a few bits of space in between our petals of lavender. Now, if you guys don't know, lavender smells really good. It's one of my favorite smells in the whole entire world. There we go, spray of lavender. And we just keep going. And I think this one's going to be my last set of petals. Yay, there we go! And if you guys want to experiment with this and use other tools, go right ahead. Can I see all of your lavender sprigs? Can you hold them up in three, two, one? Hold them up! Good job, guys! Yay! And of course, you can make this any color you want to. So that is, even though it's called lavender, you can make it any color you want to because here in this class, we are just gonna get as creative as we want. All right, for our next flower, we are going to be drawing nothing other than a rose. And this is a little bit of a simpler version of a rose, and a few of us may have already started doing this ages ago, but if this is new to you, here we go. <laughs> this is a great little hack to get to drawing roses a little bit quicker and easier. All right, so I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, and I'm going to be using our brush pen, and I'm gonna click a darker shade of red for the outline of the rose, and we're just gonna make a squiggle like that. And make sure that that squiggle is closed because we're gonna fill it in with our filling tool in a second, and then we are going to just draw a cup under it like that. And that's it, super simple. And we are gonna take our filling, tool and if you look at the filling tool you actually have different shades of that rose color that we picked but we're not going to use them today because this is a rose so we're going to make it nice and very red there we go let's fill it in yes beautiful and now we're going to draw the stem of course like the rest of our flowers i'm going to use the pencil tool Oop, hold on let's zoom oh it's not letting me zoom out there we go so I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and I'm gonna draw our stem to our beautiful rose and a nice little leaf like that. And I'll color it in very fast, very quick. And I used my finger for this one because the squiggle is a little bit easier with your finger. Who would have known? <laughs> All right, and that is it. Those are our three little doodle flowers. I hope you guys enjoyed that, but don't worry, our next drawing this is the drawing. Are we ready? Before that, can I see all of your flowers? Can you hold them up? Ready, hold them up in three, two, one. Good job! Oh my goodness. And we can draw a bunch of these flowers and you can draw them in one big field or in one big beautiful jar of flowers and change the colors and change up the sizes and do anything you want. It's a great little base to start doodling flowers. Okay, so for our last big drawing, can you guess what it might be? We're gonna start with a new blank page of paper. Can you guess what it might be? Hmm, I'll give you a little bit. I had a little preview, a little sneak peek earlier on. It was sitting on my easel just like that. Hmm, 
All right, I'll give you guys a hint. It is big and blue and go swimming on the ground. It's a little fish in the ocean. It's actually a goldfish in the ocean and goldfish don't really stay in the ocean. It's a little bit silly, but because we're getting creative and really using our imaginations, we can do whatever we want in this art class. <laughs> All right, so for this drawing, we're going to take our watercolor brush again and we are gonna take our blue color. I'm gonna pick this one and it's on the highest opacity and the highest, the biggest size. And we're just gonna dot, 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 all around the page, just like that, because we are underwater. And now, after the dark blue, I'm gonna go in with the lighter blue. There we go. And then, I'm gonna bring down the opacity, which makes it a little more transparent. And I'm going to get a lighter blue and blend that all in. And now, we have beautiful different shades of blue to represent our ocean for our little fish to swim in. Okay, and you guys can go crazy with this. You can also use this technique for other things, not just the ocean. I love using this just to set backgrounds so we have a little more texture. Okay, now that we've done all of that, I'm going to take this filling in tool that we have and grab the circle shape, but I will make that an orange circle. So let's Click the color orange and make an orange circle in the center of our screens. And I'm going to put it a little bit more to the right because we're going to add a few, a few things to the left later on. And of course, remember to click the check button and then we get all of our tools back. So now that we've clicked the check button, I'm going to use that filling in tool again and we're going to click this dot 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 one and get a darker shade of orange and we haven't used this tool like this before so this is going to be really fun we're going to zoom in and we're going to draw his tail so with this tool it's going to fill everything in for you as soon as you connect the line that you make so watch closely i'm just going to start here and i'm going to draw his tail to be nice and wavy in the ocean and then i'm going to come back here and go around his body and there we go and ta-da and you see that there's a little bit of a disconnect, that's okay. I'm going to say that that's some style to it. And after that, I'm going to, oops, not there, I'm going to zoom out a little bit and go to his head. And I'm going to give him some nice little, would they be gills? No. What are they called? The little flappy things. <laughs> his fins on his head. All right, so let us draw fins on his head. By the way, this doesn't have to be a boy goldfish. In my head, mine's a boy goldfish but you guys can make them whoever you want them to be. I think I'm gonna name mine, hmm. I'll name mine once we see his face because I think that would make most sense. All right, so I'm gonna take my felt marker and I'm gonna draw a little curve here to separate his face from the rest of his body. And then I'm going to take this, um, our oil pastel, uh, crayon in the same dark color and I'm gonna decrease the oh no before we do that let's draw his fin of course we forgot his fin all right so all I'm gonna do is draw that in again with our filling in tool just a little triangle for his fin there we go oh beautiful okay now I'm gonna go in now with our oil pastel and in this same orange but lessened um, opacity, I'm gonna draw his scales. So all we're gonna do is make a bunch of half circle shapes like that, half circle shapes, all the way down. And now we're gonna make a bunch more, another row, but this time let's make sure to end in the center of the other half circle, circle shapes before that. There we go. And you have things like this where it doesn't really continue, so you can just pretend that that continues a little bit over there. Beautiful. And we're just gonna keep going until we fill up his entire body with his big scales. And you can get as creative as you want. You can color these in if you would like. So if you would like to color in his scales, go right ahead. If you don't even want him to be a goldfish, go ahead. You can draw whatever you want, whatever fish you want. I think that's it, there we go. So there's his body and I'm gonna take the same tool and I'm going to add 
some details to his tail and his fins. I'm trying to zoom in. There we go. Let's zoom in. Let's add a few details to his tail, but the same tool, but in the lighter orange, the same orange as his body. There we go. Just add a few squiggle lines. And of course, in his little fin by his body. And now for the fin on the top of his head. There we go. Oop, that one went out. And this can be as imperfect as you want it to be because it's your fish. He can look however you want him to look. And now I'm going to take that felt marker again and I'm going to click the white color make sure the opacity is on high and I'm going to make it a big size because I'm going to draw his eye. So I'm going to just click a circle like that and make it a little bit bigger. And that's going to be his eye. There we go. And then I'm going to click a black color like that and I'm going to draw his pupil. There we go and we have an eye! <laughs> and then for his smile, I'm just going to make our stroke a little bit smaller and give him a big smile. There we go. All right, let's see. Hmm, I think I'm going to name mine now that he has his smile. I think I'm going to name mine. Quickly think, think of the names of your fish. Let's think about them, think about them, and we're going to say them together on the count of three. Okay, ready? One, two, three, Fred. Yep, I think mine looks like a Fred. <laughs> I think you picked the perfect name for yours too. All right, now that Fred is here and he's happy, I think he needs a few happy bubbles around him. So using my little marker tool, I'm going to take a lighter shade of blue and I'm going to draw a few bubbles around him. And I'm going to put the opacity a little bit lower because bubbles are pretty transparent. But we still want to know that they're there. So there we go. We have our first one. Oop, that one wasn't that great. Bubbles are nice and circled. There we go. And we have our second one. And our next one, I'm going to draw three bubbles just like that. And then I'm going to take the color white and bring it to a smaller opacity. Uh, not opacity, the same opacity, nice, and kind of semi-transparent because bubbles are very transparent. And I'm going to bring the size down a little bit and I'm going to draw some white on the side of our bubble. doesn't matter if it's not that neat. I'm going to draw there too. Oh no, they're not the same size. Okay, we'll try one more time. There we go. And up on this bubble. And oh no, where did our last bubble go? Oh no, our last bubble has, has seemed to mysteriously disappear. Oh, that's all right. Good thing we have our handy dandy. Our handy dandy drawing skills to bring it back. There we go. All right, so that is our bubble and I'm going to add our little highlight to make it look like our bubble is lovely and shiny, which bubbles really are. Beautiful, so there's Fred and his bubbles in the middle of the ocean. And I think we're gonna get a little little wild here. And we're gonna add a few strings. Would they be called strings? Hmm, I think so. A few strings of seaweed. So let us get a color green. Actually, before we do that, let's add some sand to the sea floor. So look for your sandy color. And if you can't find one, this is my favorite part, you can actually mix it. There you go. So if you click on your color for long, you can find a color that works for you. So I'm going to make mine a little more yellow, a little orange in between the two. There we go. So I'm going to add that color and I'm going to use my acrylic brush and lower the opacity to make it a little bit more transparent so we can still see it in the water. You can still see the water. Of course, I'm going to bring the size up just roughly draw our sand in like that. And I'm gonna use strokes like that. Many small ones and in different directions. The sand isn't perfect, of course. There we go, love it. And I'm going to add the airbrush effect as well to just add different textures to it. 
to blend it in a little bit better. There we go, and I'm gonna add a few sprigs of seaweed. So let us grab our oil pastel marker again. Not marker, our oil pastel crayon, and click the green. And let's add a few sprigs. Oh, let's lessen, let's add to the opacity and lessen the size. We're just gonna add a few squiggle lines like that of seaweed on one side, and of course on the other side, because he's a little bit there you go, and then I'm going to lower the size and get a lighter shade of green and add some details to our seaweed as well. There we go, so adding all the seaweed. Nice! Ooh. All right, and just keep adding as much detail as you guys would like. Of course, you can add friends with your fish. I would love my frish, frish, my friend, fish, my frish, <laughs> my friend to have a little um, starfish buddy, but you know, maybe that's for another time. So there we go. Here is Fred in the middle of the ocean, and I think your fish is having fun in the middle of the ocean too. Oh my goodness, everyone. Okay. We have officially finished our last drawing. So let's hold them all up together on the count of one, two, three. Good job, yay! And of course, you guys have been so brave with just playing along and being silly and just letting your creativity do all of the work. There's nothing completely, completely nothing wrong when you do art. There are no wrong choices. It's completely up to you because you're the artist and no one else knows how you want it to look like other than yourself. And there we go. So today we have made our beautiful watercolor, rustic looking rainbow, our little flower doodles, and of course our fish under the ocean. Yay! Give yourselves a big round of applause, everyone. Good job. You guys did amazing! Such good jobs, everyone! Give yourselves a big clap, a big clap. <laughs> I really hope that you post all of your masterpieces online so that all of our friends can see. And please don't forget to tag SM Supermalls and to use our hashtags. Hashtag awesome learning and hashtag SM Kids Month. I hope you guys had as much fun as I did because I had so much fun. And if you would like to check out other classes that I do, please have a look at my Instagram at teacher.shay and of course don't forget to look out on stage online workshops for all of your online class online workshops for eight of you on Facebook and Instagram. I hope you guys stay safe and I'll see you very soon.